I want to talk about culture, okay? I don't know what you're thinking. Oh, he's going to talk about diversity and, you know, culture, see, uh, the, um, uh, yeah, no, well, all things culture. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about culture, but I'm talking about culture as Don Cedar sees it, okay? We, I, I have a, a little, a different view on the culture than uh, what Google will give you, or maybe some other YouTubers. This is Don Shader's view on culture, and I'll give it to you right after this. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So, I, t I tell people this is my street level culture. Okay, I'm not going to talk about indigenous people. I'm not going to talk about history of culture and all that kind of stuff here. I'm not going to talk about the high level cultural things. I'm going to talk about the industry living day to day as an expat and what you can expect to see in culture when you come here. Okay, and here we go. I got, got a list. Okay, I got some notes. I'm going to start off with. If you can believe it, I'm going to start off with rude people. Now, let me tell you something, folks. Don't get me wrong. Some of the nicest people that you can ever want to meet in the world are right here in Monta, Ecuador. Right here. I've never seen so many nice people. I, I love these people. They're, they're the nicest people here. But when you get out and about and you're mixing out in society, you're going to find out that there's some really rude people here, okay? Give me an example, walking together in public. Families like to walk down the sidewalk, all of them holding hands, and they walk side by side. They, they, they're not going to move for you. I, I just act dumb and act like I'm looking for directions on my phone and they end up going around me. But if you're behind them and you want to get by them, you're going to have to probably walk in the street to go around them. In the mall, you're just going to have to either walk along behind them. You can say, excuse me, pardon, or whatever. Some people might will move for you, but don't expect it, okay? It's just, that's the culture. That's the way they do it. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it, right? Usually, there's been a few times when I've been in a bad mood, if you can believe that. And if I see a little break in their little chain, I bust right through, but I don't do that very often, you know. But I always say, excuse me, you know, and then just keep on going, all right? Entering, exiting doorways and elevators. God almighty. Go to Mega Maxi in the mall. They got three big giant elevators outside the entrance. People will stand outside those elevators waiting for one of them to open up. And if there's 20 people on the elevator that want to get off, it's like a rugby match where they all are struggling. You know, you've seen the guys on the field where they're doing this thing. They're trying to figure out who, who's going to get the ball and all that stuff. That's the way it is getting on and off elevators in Monta, Ecuador. I, I've never seen. I, I don't, the, the idea of just step aside and let the crowd come off the elevator, you know, so there's room for you to get on the elevator just doesn't cross the mind okay it just doesn't happen cutting in line that's the next thing cutting in line if you're standing in line at the grocery store and there's an inch between you and the person in front of you don't be surprised if somebody doesn't take that inch don't be surprised and if you if you give way and let somebody that's standing there holding two or three items let them go ahead of you they wave at mama who's over here with the cart full, it come on, and you just lost your place. Okay, that happens. This happened to me. I most of the time I just ignore it, but there have been a few times where I've just said, "Nope, not going to happen. Not going to happen today, folks." You know, but it's it's just I don't think they do that to be rude or mean to you and me. It's just part of their culture. Okay, it happens. At the bank, they have preferential lines for us senior citizens. That a lot of times, if depending on which bank, like Bank of Waikil, they don't usually don't have a teller that's dedicated to preferential 
senior citizens, okay? But like at Banco Pachincha, they'll have a teller whose sole responsibility for today is to take care of everybody that's in that preferential line. At Banco Waikil, if you're standing in a preferential line, most people will see that you're there and you get the next spot, okay? But don't count on it. Don't always happen. I've had guards tell people, ah, back, let the old man through. Loud cell phones in public. Get used to it. But of course, you know how it is. If it's not loud, it's no good here. But you can be sitting in a nice restaurant and, you know, Joe Blow over here in the next booth over here wants to watch a soccer match on his cell phone. And everybody gets to hear it. Okay? It doesn't make any difference. That YouTube videos, private message, somebody on a video message or anything, everybody gets to hear it. Okay? Uh, crossing the street. Don't be fooled by the stripes that you see that we normally, we North Americans normally think of as a crosswalk. I don't know what the hell they are here. It's decorations maybe. I don't know. Somebody spilled some paint and they spilled it in stripes. I, I, who knows? It's not a crosswalk. I swear to God, I can step out in that crosswalk and there'll be a motorcycle two blocks away and you'll hear him speed up. I can hear him accelerating. Oh my God, there's somebody in the crosswalk. Just get them. Cars will not stop for you. They will They will come right to you. You know, don't expect anybody to let you. There are people that do it, okay? Don't get me wrong, okay? But don't expect anybody in this country that's driving a car or a motorcycle or a bus to stop and allow you to cross the street because it, most of the time it's just not going to happen. Culture, okay? That's just the culture. The other thing, lack of perceived common sense. Some people are seen doing the most stupid things. All right? And I, I talk about this a lot. One of the first things I learned when I came here, I wanted to learn, I, I say, donde esta sentido común? That's where is your common sense? You'll see this a lot. I've seen people standing on top of ladders, painting with a roller. No, no barriers, no... Standing on top, the top step of a stepladder, painting. I used to have a picture of this guy in Cuenca painting, and he's standing on a six-foot stepladder on the top. I don't know how he got there, you know? And But you won't see, you very seldom see barriers put up around dangerous spots, okay, and sidewalks and so forth. It just, I tell people, no, that would make common sense, and we're just not going to get that. Okay, it's, I see it in construction. The light switches behind the door, you know, the towel racks mounted on the walls upside down. You see the little set screws, they're on top and set on the bottom. I, I, there, I can show, I think, hopefully, here's a picture that I took of an apartment in my building where you walk in the front door and here's the bathroom to the right. The bathroom door opens outward and blocks half of the doorway entrance to the master bedroom. Okay? Don't open on the inside. They have it open on the outside. Common sense. It's very hard to find what you might think of as common sense here, okay? So get used to that too, okay? The other thing, lack of customer service. Nobody wants to wait on you or help you in the stores or restaurants. You have to ask for everything. Yep, pretty much so. Ladies and gentlemen, when you come here and go to Dolce and Cremoso, and you want a cup of coffee and you sit there and gulp that cup down, don't think, don't you even think that somebody's going to come up to your up to the table with a pot of coffee in their hand, refill, ain't going to happen. You go to the department store, Depradi. Go to the department store. Go in the big giant home store. You know, go in there and go try, try to find something. All the help is standing back looking at you. Nobody... And now some people may consider this a blessing because in the States, I hate it when people follow me around. But you want help, you have to ask for it. You want another cup of coffee, you got to get a waiter's attention. Get them over to you and order that second cup of coffee. Nobody comes by to see how your food is, how's your dinner, how's your breakfast. Nobody. I've never seen that happen to me here in Ecuador. Two years and six months that I've been here, 
I've never seen anybody come ask me, how's my meal? How's it going? How can I help you? What can I help you find? It doesn't happen, okay? So forget that, okay? There is anything like customer service, forget it. Timeliness. <laughs> you know, I put on here manana bullshit. They, manana means just not today. If they say they're going to be here at 9 o'clock in the morning, forget it. Go ahead and go to breakfast. Because most, most of the time, they're not going to be here at 9 o'clock. I had an air conditioning guy who's going to be here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He shows up the next morning as I'm walking out to go to the mall to eat breakfast. Okay? Guess what? I left him sitting on the steps. Told him I'll be back when I get back. And believe it or not, when I got back, he was still here. He was in the lobby, but he was here. He waited for me. I said, okay, you're supposed to be here for yesterday. Timeliness. There is no, nobody is on time. It just don't happen here. It's, it's just the culture, and that's just the way it is. If you don't like it, just shut the hell up, because you can't, there ain't nothing you can do about it. I do know Juan Zambrano. Juan Zambrano, the, the personal driver. If, it, if he tells you he's going to be here at 9 o'clock, he's here at 8.59. Okay, or earlier. But he's a rare exception. Okay? Services, air conditioning, even the doctors can be late. I had the lab come here to do a blood test on me. They were two hours late. I said, forget it. You know, just forget it. Just go on back. I'm eating dinner. And probably wouldn't have been a good time to get a blood test anyway after having a couple of beers and eating dinner. So, but... Timeliness, you can just forget it. It ain't going to happen, okay? And then, of course, I've got loud parties, sound, and music. Even in the senior center at the runnery, at the nunnery, I call it the nunnery. It's a, it's a home down here that's just nothing but nuns. They, they, get, they have get-togethers with children, and they're in a space about maybe a, a 500 square feet. And they bring big speakers in a PA system so the girls can yell at the little children. I mean, at an unbelievable decibel level. Even the senior center down below me here, when they have a birthday, maybe they need it there because most of those people probably can't hear it anyway. But loud parties, you've heard me talk about it. You can be sound asleep at 10 o'clock at night. A party starts up with blasting music and boom 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 <laughs> that kind of stuff you know and you'll hear it until three four or five o'clock seven o'clock in the morning can't do anything about it okay that's like the i talk about the street noise the party noise on over in barbara's Gill. i don't understand why anybody wants to stay over there on friday and saturday night you're not going to sleep unless you're hard of hearing and then, of course, the last thing is about driving. I, as you know, I drive, and I, I'm not going to stop driving. So don't tell me if you don't like driving, don't like driving, say the car. Don't tell me I shouldn't have bought a car. You people that tell me that kind of stuff, you, uh, you makes me want to just ban you from the channel. Okay? But here we go, honking. Everybody honks at you. That's all there is to it. I, I, I don't think these people here can drive if they don't have a horn. I bet you if you take a horn off somebody's car, they're going to stand outside going. They're not going to know what to do. Honking. The light turns green. Faster than a millisecond, the person behind you is honking the horn. It's quicker than a millisecond. They cannot. It's it's just the way it is. You can hear the horn talking in this video. Maybe. There, I, there's some going off. Cutting you off. They, people here. I swear to God. I think that when people get in their car. They start it up. And they put blinders. They put a, a blindfold on. And that's the way they drive. Because they don't see you. They don't see each other. They think nothing about just pull out into traffic. I don't know how. I haven't seen a hundred wrecks. I don't get it. 
Something's wrong with this picture. These people drive like I've seen people pull away from the curb. Don't even use a turn signal or nothing. It's pull right out in front of you. I don't know how they keep from getting hit. But they don't. They don't have that many wrecks. Bad parking. Nobody knows how to park around this damn place. Nobody. I, I don't know what. The, there must be a law against parking within six inches of a curb. There are people down here on my street right here that will park two feet away from the curb and block half the road. And get out and walk on in and just as if it don't matter. You know, it just happens. They have they they have no parking control in this city whatsoever that I know of. No in the worst example of that is on corners. People will park at on a corner and that damn fly don't get away from me. They will park I, I don't care. You can't see through those cars and you have to pull out into traffic to see if anybody's coming because there's cars parked right there on the corner. In the States, there would be no parking zones. There is no such thing as a no parking zone. That's a bit of an exaggeration. If you see the sign with the E on it and the circle with the line in it, that means no parking. But shit, nobody pays any attention to it. So, you know, park where you want, okay? Disrespect, huh? Jeez, I... I don't know I, that's disrespect respect in a, in a lot of ways is just not part of Ecuador it just doesn't exist and I'm not saying that to say that people are purposely disrespect you it, it's just I don't think there's a, such a thing as respect I mean you can see that when you walk down the sidewalk and see all the dog shit that's piled up in the sidewalks you know, you disrespect when you, the other day I'm driving down here and there's a taxi driver down here standing out pissing on the sidewalk, okay? Don't go to a restroom anywhere. Let's just get out and pee on, on the sidewalk, this taxi driver. I, I, that's when I wish I had a pea shooter with a big marble in it, you know? Disrespect. They don't, it, it just, it's, it's it just respect just doesn't exist at all levels here okay so and again folks i'm not i'm not saying this to try to keep you from coming here come on down because you're going to get to experience all of this yourself motorcycle riders there you go that's the highest mortality rate in traffic accidents in all of ecuador over 67 percent is motorcyclists hey i'm telling you I, I, I've not seen a motorcycle accident yet. I don't know how I've missed it. But, I mean, I had to take Mark Bradbury to the emergency room at midnight one night. And on the way back home, I missed a kid sitting in the street on his cell phone at a light with no lights on his motorcycle at all. I missed him by a coat of paint. You know? And, and then motorcyclists don't stop at red lights. They don't stop at stop signs. They cut in and out of traffic. They drive extremely fast. And they just take way, way too many chances. And like I said in one of the videos the other day about all the motorcycles that are impounded. They're all impounded because of traffic violations. Okay? And when you get here and you see the way they drive, you will, you'll see what I'm talking about. The other thing I said, lack of common sense with road design. One-way streets, lack of turning lanes, no parking, bad parking, corners that block your view, horribly placed traffic lights. You stop at a, at a, at, you see a red light. The stop, the red light is not across the street. You, you have to park half a, you have to stop 30 feet back this way so you can see the red light that's on this corner, not across where you can see it. There are some that are placed like that, but most of the time, if you if they even have a traffic light, sometimes you have to find the damn thing, okay? Because they don't, they don't, they're not strategically placed. They're just, I think they just put them where oh the ground's soft here, we can dig a hole here and let's put it here. All right, that 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 must that has to be it. So, but anyway, all right. So that's it. That's my take on culture. I said it. I don't take it back. I'm not offering any apologies. 
anybody that leaves a comment in the comment section tells me if I don't like it here, leave. I'm gonna you're you're out of here. You're not in my channel anymore. I promise you that, okay? Because that doesn't do a damn bit of good. That's not the solution, okay? I don't have the solution. I'm not gonna try to come up with a solution. I can't fix my own damn country, so why well, try to fix this one? And telling me that if I don't like it here, leave, is all that does is piss me off. And if that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. And you can go watch a million JP, okay? Okay, that's it for this channel. If you like this channel, or no, that's it for this video. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like this video, bite me, okay? And I'll see you that with peace and love. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.